Okay, so today I want to get into whatever Billy Mitchell is doing because I uh, I know that well this particular video is three years old, but I, I never really heard about it or got into it. I've heard the name before, and I know Carl Jobs has had um, like this a kind of feud with this guy. So I'm watching his video today on gaming's biggest con man billy mitchell is being sued for millions so let's get into it and i hope that this helps uh clarify whatever billy mitchell did you absolute legends let's see. the billy mitchell vs twin galaxies legal battle is the gift that just keeps on giving and recently things okay. have taken an amazing turn a few months ago, I released a video called The Dumbest Lawsuit in Video Game History, where I broke down the defamation lawsuit that Billy Mitchell had filed against Twin Galaxies for suggesting that his Donkey Kong World Records were not achieved legitimately. This was just okay, one of see? many lawsuits that Billy Mitchell has filed or threatened to file against other gaming organizations and YouTubers. Hell, he even hired a lawyer and threatened to sue me for briefly yeah, mentioning that's him what I in was... one of my, yeah. oh. my videos. Briefly mentioning you. Oh God, maybe I'm scared. I mean, I, I know that I'm like, I'm definitely nobody, but it's like. The vexatious nature of Billy Mitchell can't be overstated. And he has been using the legal system as a weapon for years. When I made hmm. my video covering his lawsuits, people were either afraid to talk to me or wanted to remain completely anonymous in fear of his retaliation. Ooh. Well, now it appears as though Mitchell is about to get a taste of his own medicine. Twin Galaxies has now responded with their own multi-million dollar lawsuit against Mitchell, citing misrepresentation, fraud, and racketeering. Twin Galaxies has pulled absolutely no punches and are going after Mitchell's entire fake history. The allegations in this new lawsuit not I only guess you'd include have to. illegal business practices, but also attacks every major claim Mitchell has made about his gaming accomplishments. Twin Galaxies allege that Mitchell was not the first person to do a perfect game of Pac-Man, that he did not receive the Video Game Player of the Century award from Namco, and that not only were his Donkey Kong scores what? fake, but he fraudulently used those fake achievements for personal financial gain. But that's not all. The lawsuit also alleges oh that Mitchell God. intentionally obscured legitimate gaming here? achievements from other players in order to increase his own Aww. profits. People that are very familiar with Billy Mitchell's past have been calling him a fraud and a cheat for over 20 years, but until now they were just allegations thrown around without any substantial action behind them. And honestly, Sucks. what could they do? Until 2014, Billy Mitchell was the joint owner of Twin Galaxies. It was exactly this power that allowed his disgraceful practices to go on unabated. However, this is no longer the case, and the new owner of Twin Galaxies, Jace Hall, is cleaning house. In this video, we will quickly cover the most egregious hey? accusations in this recent lawsuit. There is a lot of juicy material to cover, and I really hope you enjoy. <laughs> oh, we will. <laughs> Now, before we go on, Christmas is just around the corner and today's sponsor, Ridge, has got you covered. Now, we all know that Ridge make epic compact wallets and if okay. you haven't gotten one by- I, I don't usually skip ads, but this is a three-year-old video. Well, do you think it would still be running? By now, I don't know. What I'll are you just even let doing it play. With your life? But Ridge also offer a bunch of different products and they are all incredible quality. They stock backpacks, bags, phone cases, and my personal favorite, the Summit Knife. Honestly, if someone gave me a knife for Christmas, that would be amazing. So go and check out their range and get someone something nice for Christmas. You can get 10% off plus free worldwide shipping by going to ridge.com legend or clicking the link in the description. A very important okay. thing I have to point out immediately is that in this new lawsuit, Mitchell isn't the only defendant. Twin Galaxies is also suing Walter Day, who was also the past owner of Twin Galaxies. Is he recording Galaxy. some kind of documentary? He's Look at it. With Mitchell. What I is briefly this? touched on Walter Day in my previous video, The Longest Con in Video Game History, but as of yet, I haven't really underscored how pivotal Day was in Twin Galaxies' corruption. According to the new hmm. Twin Galaxies, Walter Day had full knowledge of and was even complicit in creating and promoting Billy Mitchell's fake scores. Now, you can't just sue someone for faking <laughs> video game scores, so we need to understand why this new lawsuit was filed specifically. Jace Hall is well, in if a he made all kinds of money. to put forward this action as he purchased Twin Galaxies from Billy Mitchell and Walter Day in 2014. 
Given that the value of twin galaxies is directly impacted by the revelations of past fraud, this means that he alone has cause to seek damages from Mitchell and Day. Not only that, okay. but the lawsuit also makes allegations of illegal activity based on those past fraudulent claims. In a nutshell, the lawsuit asserts that Mitchell and Day used their power in Twin Galaxies to accept and promote video game scores that they knew were fake. They promoted those fake scores in order to personally profit, in the form of appearance fees, business partnerships, etc. They also promoted these right, knowingly like fake they made money, in basically. order to inflate the perceived value yeah. of Twin Galaxies so that they could sell it for a huge profit to prospective buyers. The latest of such buyers being Jace Hall, who as far as he was concerned, oh. was buying a legitimate high score database. In fact, included in the purchase wow. agreement was a stipulation that the score database did not contain untrue and misleading statements of fact. The actions of Mitchell and Day essentially amount to fraud. Twin Galaxies also alleges that Mitchell and Day used company Why, funds guys? for their own personal use and to pay off personal debts, which is a big no-no. So that's the context okay. that gives cause for the lawsuit to begin with. Now let's look at the specific claims about Mitchell's gaming career. The lawsuit begins with the resurrection of Twin Galaxies in 1997. It states, Beginning in 1997, Walter Day and Billy Mitchell conspired and agreed to commit fraud to restore old Twin Galaxies to prominence and increase the value of the business assets for potential future suitors. Plaintiff alleged... Why? Why? Like, it would take a lot of work to do that, wouldn't it? Why don't you just do... The normal way, like, the... The not illegal way, Just why? That Walter Day and Billy Mitchell conspired to manufacture a persona for Billy Mitchell as the greatest video game player of all time. The problem <laughs> was that Billy Mitchell lacked the requisite natural skill or ability. Throughout this mm, entire ordeal, okay, it was, plenty it was a of little people easier. have stated their belief that Billy Mitchell is a fantastic video game player, but the reality is that he really is not. Compared to the best players in any game, he falls far behind. If you look at his competition results, he always ranks very low, and has never been competitive at the top level. For a concrete example, we can look to the wow. Come Off, a yearly Donkey Kong high school competition that began in 2011. In the first two competitions, he placed well behind the leader. And remember, he claimed to achieve the world record live in just 2010. In 2013, he placed dead last, and from hmm. that point on stopped competing entirely. People that claim that Billy Mitchell is a world-class gamer are usually clueless about his competition performances and how he ranks against the other top players. People who saw him play- I know I'm not saying much. I see, so it's people on all kinds of platforms. I mean, number seven isn't too bad, but it's Live not what they're claiming. Live were skeptical of his world records, long before the concrete evidence showed them to be fake. He was just never that good. Hmm. We've all heard the claim that Billy Mitchell was the first person to attain a perfect score in Pac-Man. However, this is almost certainly not true. Over it the years, be, yeah, a slew of evidence has his been found suggesting otherwise, and many other Pac-Man players acknowledge other people as getting a perfect score first. The lawsuit states, to fabricate the lore of Billy Mitchell as a great video game player, Walter Day purged other people's scores in the Twin Galaxies score database when it was republished what? in 1997. No. Scores of Billy Mitchell that were not world records previously suddenly became world records. For example, Billy Mitchell was installed as the world record holder for the Donkey Kong Jr. video game when in fact another player's score was removed by oh, Walter Day man. upon republication. Similarly, Walter Day and Billy Mitchell rejected claims from other players, Bill Bastable being one, that they had achieved a perfect score on the Pac-Man video game, but accepted the claim of Billy Mitchell to recognize him as the first player to achieve such a perfect score. A fellow arcade- Okay, that's really sad only because, like, if y'all have ever watched a speedrunner, or just, uh, if you haven't, just find one on Twitch and just watch, like, just even a few minutes of what they do. They work so hard. Sometimes it takes them like a year or years to even have a good score or a good time. So I imagine it's about the same for this game, right? That's terrible. A high school competitor That's years named Dwayne Richard made an entire documentary about how Bill Bastable was the first person to achieve a perfect Pac-Man, and not Billy Mitchell. This has been fairly well known for many years now. 
The lawsuit also talks about the Video Game Player of the Century Award. This is the award that Mitchell claims was presented by Namco in September of 1999. And most of us have all seen the famous picture of Billy Mitchell with Masaya Nakamura. No, I haven't. And Billy's the most distinguished person in the book because he's the only person to have a full page that recognizes his status as the video game player of the century. He was crowned Just the video both game of player them. of the century at the Tokyo Game Show in 1999. Where, in 1999, after having performed history's first perfect Pac-Man, on stage at the Tokyo Game Show in front of 70,000 people, Masaya Nakamura presented me the Video Game Player of the Century Award. No, oh, no, that Here's should what not actually have been happened. His. The Video Game Player of the Century Award was given to Mitchell by Walter Day in August of 1999, a month before the Namco event. Walter mm -hmm. Day and Billy Mitchell then flew to Japan and asked Namco for the photo op, saying it would be good for publicity. That plaque being given to Mitchell was just congratulating him on his perfect Pac-Man score uh. and advertising the upcoming release of the 20th anniversary version of Pac-Man for the PlayStation. So not being the Namco first. never gave him any awards and certainly never said he was the video game player of the century. That mm. entire story is completely fabricated. The lawsuit asserts this in no uncertain terms. In 1999, Billy Mitchell and Walter Day worked to suppress earlier perfect Pac-Man scores of other players, and altered the competitive rules to allow for Billy Mitchell to be crowned by old Twin Galaxies as the first person to achieve a perfect Pac-Man score when in fact he nope. was not. To further their deception, Billy Mitchell and Walter Day created an award with the title of Video Game Player of the Century specifically for Billy Mitchell, and successfully developed the false narrative that Namco, the creator of the Pac-Man game, had directly given or endorsed Billy Mitchell with that title. The lawsuit then moves on to the infamous Donkey Kong scores, and also the deception contained in the documentary The King of Kong. So degenerate. Now, like, I've said before on. that The King of Kong is an awesome documentary, and it still is, if you completely disregard the fact that it lies about the world record progression of the game. The King of Kong is framed around the competition between Billy Mitchell and Steve Wiebe, and the movie claims that, that the Mitchell had earlier? held the record since 1982, but this is not the case. The reality is that Mitchell's score was beaten in 2000 by Tim Serby, with a score of 879,000. This would remain the record until 2002, when it was toppled by Steve Wiebe. From 2002 right. to 2003, Wiebe would continue to improve his scores, eventually breaking a million points. However, all of his scores during this period were disqualified from Twin Galaxies for <laughs> one reason or another. It was touched on in the King of Kong film, but Twin Galaxies had a long history of changing rules on a whim in order to disqualify records so that its marketable players were still on top. Again, the lies spread in the King of Kong were purely to inflate the value of Twin Galaxies and yeah, to allow Mitchell course. to personally profit. Of the course. And like, yeah, I know it's just a game and it's not a big deal. But for these people, it's a really big deal. Like seriously, working years on something, many years on one goal and you finally get it. No matter what it is, you finally get it, and some person just pressed the press the delete. The lawsuit states clearly on it. During like, the filming horrible. of King of Kong, Billy Mitchell and Walter Day worked to diminish and obfuscate the 2000 Donkey Kong score mm -hmm. performance by Tim Serby of 879,200 points, which at the time of performance was a world record, in order to perpetuate the false narrative of Billy Mitchell's prominence as the top achieving competitive figure. Now we get to the juiciest part of the lawsuit in my opinion. Up until now, Twin Galaxies have been very careful what in their public show? statements like, regarding Billy Mitchell's Donkey Kong scores. They only stated that the performances on his submitted videotapes did not come from an original, unmodified Donkey Kong circuit board. But in this new lawsuit, they finally tell it like it really is. They state, on or about July 3rd, 2005, Billy Mitchell and Walter Day created a fake Donkey Kong score performance of 1,047,200 and submitted it to defeat the legitimate world record of Steve Wiebe with the intent of fraudulently inflating the value of old Twin Galaxies and its assets in anticipation of a future sale of the company or its right. assets. The fraud was technical in nature, and the two enlisted the help of Billy Mitchell's longtime friend, Robert Childs, in the commission of the fraud. It makes a similar claim for the next two scores. However, now also indicts Todd Rogers and Kimberly Mahoney in the commission of the fraud. 
To clarify, Rogers what? and Mahoney were the Twin Galaxies referees that claimed they witnessed the performances. And if you've already forgotten, Todd Rogers is the same person that was banned from Twin Galaxies after many <laughs> of his claimed high scores were proven to be impossible. Oh, Kimberly no. Mahoney was his then girlfriend. Very convenient. She did it too? For those who have been following the Billy Mitchell saga, Robert <laughs> Childs is the same person who starred along Billy Mitchell in the infamous board swap video, where they pretended to swap boards for Mitchell's alleged world record. It is so important to remember that Mitchell has never been acting what? alone in these scams. And yeah, it's good to see his associates also being called out for their contributions. Now those are all the claims related issues. to the Mitchell's video game scores, and if true, would expose Mitchell as one of the biggest frauds in gaming history. Bigger than he already is anyway. The lawsuit then goes on at length about how Mitchell and Day profited from this fraud and outlines their illegal business activities. However, as this is a gaming channel, those accusations probably won't interest many of you. There are some extremely damning claims contained within though, including Mitchell's and Day's association with known pedophiles. Oh, and I almost oh, forgot, no. Twin Galaxies is demanding $3,333,360 for general damages and $3,160,200 in special damages, plus more. Billy Mitchell has caused a oh lot of damage God. and pain over That's the years gross. to many people. And at last, his deceit is finally being exposed. This lawsuit has been a long time coming, and I'm sure it will bring relief to a lot of people. The irony is that if it weren't for all of the frivolous lawsuits that Mitchell filed against other people, this counter lawsuit would have never happened. The new Twin Galaxies only realized the extent of Mitchell's fraud after being forced to investigate the issues further in defense of his original defamation claim. He literally brought it on himself. Yeah. Ugh. These people usually slip up somehow and then... Okay. <laughs> there were some things in there I was... um. I don't know about like the accomplices and and their scandals i've never heard of that this was three years ago and i've been seeing uh more recent videos on this that he's been in court so i wonder if that's the same thing it, you know a court system here takes so long uh it could very well be that same lawsuit but i will um Look at Carl's newest video. Hold As on. As always, second. thank you so much for okay. watching. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. Okay. So, Carl just posted, um, I think a few days ago, another video on Billy Mitchell and how he's lying in court. It could be the same case. If it is, or even if it's not, maybe we'll check it out. But yeah, that's unpleasant. <laughs> Jeez. It would be really difficult to bring a case against this, you know, because it's kind of. It would be hard to get anyone to take it seriously because it's a gaming, but money is involved. So and apparently he's in court. So um, hopefully that's bringing some kind of justice. Yeah, but I will leave this video in the description if you haven't seen it already. And yeah, I'll see you in whatever is next.